Some of the most exciting days I had were those leading up to a rocket launch. We would get there about a week ahead of time and spend an entire day checking out the rocket. And so for that, I would wake up at three o'clock in the morning, show up to the rocket, and I would take the elevator all the way up to the top of the rocket, which these rockets are, I think, about 10 stories tall. And so I would get all the way to the top and have to check out the top of the rocket all the way to the bottom of the rocket. I was in charge of all the engines and there were seven different types of engines on the rocket. And so I would need to inspect every single one of them to make sure that they were installed correctly, everything looked good, all of the safety wires that were supposed to be removed before launch had already been removed and everything was 100% ready to go. And then the most exciting days of all were the days of the actual rocket launch. And so it depends what time of day your rocket is launching by exactly where the satellite needs to go in space. But a lot of times it felt like the rockets always were launching around sunrise, which meant that we had to get there at midnight. And so when your day starts at midnight, that means you need to try and go to bed as soon as dinner's over so that you can wake up. Uh, but it was always so exciting because I would just remember where the satellite was going and what it was doing. And so showing up to work at midnight and I would sit on console with these images of all of the rockets engines in front of me and watch them do the countdown sequence. They would do things like push nitrogen gas through the entire engine to make sure that nothing accidentally lit on fire because nitrogen is completely inflammable. And so therefore by putting that through, you know that nothing would be capable of lighting on fire. And then they would warm up the engines just like you might warm up your car for a couple minutes before you start driving. And start pushing all of these other fluids through to be ready to go. At the end, about four minutes before the rocket took off, I had to go through the entire spreadsheet and make sure everything had been done. And I was the one on the radio that said, we are go for launch from an engine perspective, which was so cool. Then four minutes later, I would see the engine's light on the screen and feel the entire building rumble literally rumble around me as the, the rocket took off and leapt into the sky. My primary engines only burned for four minutes, which is crazy that the entire rocket loses half of its weight in the first four minutes of flight. And then these engines would shut off and the entire first section of the rocket would break off and fall down into the ocean. On launch days, I would sit in front of a console that had three or four different monitors that each showed me a different view of the rocket engine. Some of these views were actual pictures from cameras that were placed nearby, but others were actually just schematics or mock-ups, kind of like blueprints of what the engine looks like. And that would show us all of the different pumps, all of the different fluids that were flowing through, because it was really important for us to be able to gauge the temperature and see exactly where that temperature gauge was. And then also to look at how fast the pumps were moving to make sure that they met the minimum thresholds that they needed to before a rocket launch occurred. All of the data for these were fed to us real time from sensors inside the engine that were directly connected to our consoles so that we could access all of the data real time and see what was going on as it happened. From the time I give the go for launch at launch minus four minutes, everything actually becomes completely automated because things are happening so quickly at that point that it would be too fast for a human to try and give all the commands for those next steps. And so everything happens back to back, but we need to closely monitor everything that's happening to make sure that everything is hitting the speeds, the temperatures, and the thresholds that it needs to. And we have to be ready to hit the abort button if anything is not going to plan. So it was always a pretty tense time. 